testing is an inescapable part of the development process. Some testers are really developers who focus on testing. The tests they create are often automated, and so they're easy to run over and over as the code changes. Automated testing is important, but it's not the whole story. Manual testing, which usually means testing an app through its user interface, is also important. Visual Studio 2010 aims at providing good support for both automated and manual testing. And both of these testing styles share some common concerns. For example, how should test results and diagnostic data be gathered? Here's the core problem. Testers must find bugs, and then they must provide good diagnostic data about those bugs. Without this, developers can't fix the bugs. In fact, they often can't even reproduce the bugs on their own machines. One of the main goals of VS 2010 is to change this. Microsoft calls this no more no repro bugs, which means that testers should always be able to submit enough information in a bug report to let a developer reproduce the bug and fix it. To help do this, VS 2010 provides diagnostic data adapters, DDAs. Here's how they're used. Suppose I've got an application under test running on one machine and another machine from which I'm submitting tests, either from Visual Studio IDE or from Microsoft Test Manager. This process relies on a test controller and a test agent on the two machines, and it relies on DDAs running with the application under test. The tester submits a test through the controller and the agent. The application runs the tests, and the DDAs gather information about the application while it's running the test. The test agent then sends back the result of the test and diagnostic data produced by the DDAs. Here are some examples of DDAs. Event log. It collects information written to event logs during the test. Video recorder records the screen of the computer the tested app is running on. This is useful for tested user interfaces, for example. Action recording, which allows recording and replaying a manual test. IntelliTrace, this is interesting. IntelliTrace creates a detailed trace of an application's execution. It's a series of very detailed snapshots, which a developer can then later replay. During this replay, the developer can see into the app variable states and more. As I showed you already, VS 2010 includes Microsoft Test Manager, a new tool designed solely for testing. One thing you can do with this tool is create and manage sets of test cases. Here's a simple example. Notice right away, the user interface for MTM is not based on the Visual Studio IDE. This is a tool for testing, not development. And in this case, what we are seeing is a requirement and a set of test cases that are linked to that requirement. This is actually data stored in TFS, Team Foundation Server, that we're viewing through Microsoft Test Manager. VS 2010 also has a component called Lab Management. This piece of the product lets testers create and manage VMs for a test lab. These VMs can be created from predefined templates, so they can be configured to include test agents and IIS and SQL Server, whatever you need for the application. Here's a picture. Lab management is actually implemented as part of Team Foundation Server. The client for this component is part of Microsoft Test Manager. And so, a tester who wants to build a test lab out of virtual machines can use this client to ask lab management to create those VMs. To do this, lab management actually relies on Virtual Machine Manager, which is included with lab management. To see how all these parts fit together, it is useful to walk through a scenario. So, let's imagine we'd like to test a three-tier application. And so we start with a tester creating the test lab VMs, three of them, with the appropriate configuration, test agents and perhaps more. Those VMs can also have various DDAs 
placed inside them. Now suppose the tester, again using Microsoft Test Manager, creates a test plan. These tests are stored in the test case management piece of TFS. We're now ready to start testing an actual build. So, the build management function of TFS can deploy a new build automatically to our VM test lab. Once we've done that, we can now start submitting test cases. Those tests execute, and the DDAs record diagnostic data. The results are sent back to TFS, where they can be accessed by the tester. The idea is to provide lots and lots of diagnostic data that the tester can send back to the developer to help that developer find and fix these bugs. In fact, along with the DDA data, a tester can even send back a link to the virtual machine in which a bug occurred. A developer who cannot find a bug, given all this data, probably shouldn't be on your team. All these mechanisms can be used either for manual or automated testing. Both styles are important, and VS 2010 supports both. Let's start by looking at manual testing. A primary purpose of Microsoft Test Manager is to support manual testing. Along with the UI shown earlier for test management, MTM also has an interface for running manual tests. It's sometimes called the test runner, and it looks like this. On the right, you can see the UI of the app being tested. On the left, docked right alongside it, is the UI for the Microsoft Test Manager test runner. Notice here, there's a series of tests being run manually. Most have passed the green circles, but one has found a bug, the red circle. And so the tester is in the process of submitting a bug report. That report can have attached to it all kinds of diagnostic data created by the DDAs. Manual tests are important, but so are automated tests. And so VS 2010 supports several different kinds of automated testing. Unit tests, of course, are important. Since so much logic is built in databases, there's also support for database unit tests. The product also has a way to create web performance tests, which allows submitting requests directly via HTTP to the application to measure performance. And there's support for coded UI tests, which are software that exercises the user interface directly. VS 2010 also supports one more kind of testing, load testing. Here's how it looks. A test controller can talk to some number of test agents. Those test agents can then all potentially simultaneously send web performance tests at the application. The idea is to simulate how the app will behave under a heavy load of many simultaneous users. Load testing. It's an important part of many development processes. Both manual and automated testing are critical parts of app development. By building a common foundation for both that provides lots of information about bugs, Visual Studio 2010 aims at improving the quality of applications. Just as important, it also aims at improving the lives of the people who test those applications.